Hey guys, and welcome to the Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report presented by Angelo Di Paola, the coastal connection with EXP Realty. The first podcast to bring you the local inshore, offshore, and onshore fishing report, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. All right, guys, I am your host, Butch Theory, here again this week. And before we jump into the report, we got a really cool opportunity for you. We have partnered with AFCO, and they are offering all of our listeners a free sun protection mask with any purchase of AFCO products. They make a ton of great products for all types of anglers. All you have to do to get the coupon code is text the word FISHING to 314-665-1767. Again, just text the word FISHING to 314-665-1767 to subscribe to our email list, and we'll send you the promo code via email. All right, guys, we have a great Alabama saltwater fishing report lined up for you this week. But first, let's take a few minutes to check out a few of this week's great sponsors. And also, don't forget to check out our sponsors whenever you're in the marketplace for any of their products or services. They're the one that brings you the podcast for each week. This week's Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report is brought to you by Sportsman's Marine. Sportsman's Marine has an extensive tackle selection of anything that local anglers need for saltwater and freshwater fishing, as well as boating accessories. They have the largest selection of the slick lure in Mobile and Baldwin County. They have AFCO, Pelagic, and Saltwater Fanatics apparel along with other local brands. Go check out their Edgewater, Wellcraft, and Vexus lines of boats. They offer engine services with five-star Yamaha and Mercury mechanics. Also, If you're looking for a street legal electric golf cart, go check out their Atrix golf carts. Sportsman's Marine on Highway 98, and they also have a downtown location next to Mr. Gene's Beans in Fairhope, Alabama. And also brought to you by Richardoni Family Dentistry. You're going to need a good dentist, so you may as well make an appointment with fellow angler Josh Richardoni. He provides services for all ages and accepts most dental insurances. Do not let an achy tooth ruin a day on the water. Call today to book an appointment at 251-342-6672. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report. I am your host, Butch Theory, and I'm here with Captain Richard Rutland today as my co-host, Cold-Blooded Fishing. Hey, bud. How are you? Doing good, man. How are man, you doing today? Great, great. Had a very enjoyable morning with you on the water with uh, with some great friends, and um, just glad to be back co-hosting. It's been a little bit. It has been a little bit, especially yeah. in person. Getting to be that time of year where you're not running seven, eight days a week. Mm-hmm, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> not running. And some nights. Yeah. <laughs> that's right but yeah we did have a great day man it's not very often that i come in smelling like fish on a wednesday i usually don't fish on wednesdays because podcast day just can be you know crazy yeah because you're so worried about the podcast all yeah. day yeah well then we usually record our hunting land podcast earlier in the day mm-hmm. usually two interviews so we you know do two or three a day sometimes but yeah it worked out got to get out with some great guys it was good good times heck yeah got to help, just got to help dr door matt dylan keen uh finish up his um Finer project, he had to go deploy some new hydrophones to uh, gate off the bay for our uh, finder project we're doing. And then uh, we went and caught a couple of fish and brought them to him. So for sure, worked out perfect. And then finished up with a little redfish, a uh, little wouldn't, redfish. I wouldn't say they were little red. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. They weren't, they God, weren't footballs, man. They're perfect size. That was fun. Yeah. How many flounder did I catch? Three today. What? Yeah. Come three. on now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little trio. Yeah. Uh, Butch has graduated from. First we were Uno, then we were Dos, now we're Trace. I like it. So I can say that I've been Trace <laughs> several times now. So maybe first, we can just forget that first it's a I've thing. Seen, first I've seen it. So, that's true. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's fair no, enough. I like it. No, you're, uh, we've raised you up good, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, man, we're going to have a great report lined up for you guys this week. We're going to talk to Bearded Brad. He's going to let us know what's going on, on the beach. we got Captain Bobby. Looking forward to his inshore report. Be cool to see what he's been seeing. Um, and Captain Delenn Sigler, we're gonna go offshore and get his report too. Um, so we have some good stuff today, man. What a beautiful day! What a beautiful stretch of weather we've had. It's I know. been great. You know, we've had like these one or two little front days where rains a little bit, gets on out of here, you know, and then it's like poof, <laughs> it gets pretty again. You it's know, beautiful the water, man. The, I was, I mean, today was one of those days where you could have just got up in the tower and just rode just because how gorgeous it was. That's right. Everywhere we went today, the water was beautiful everywhere that i have been fishing uh the past several weeks the water has just been absolutely gorgeous you know uh you get right off the beach and you can see down 15 or 20 feet you get up in the bay that very often up in the bay where you normally have like you know one to two foot of visibility you've got three and four and five foot of visibility in some areas had a pretty interesting day the other day we were got on some flats that i fish quite a bit but the water was gin clear and you could see every little single feature on the bottom it's cool when it's like that it was so cool to be able to see it you know um it's so funny because it's so rare for us right i mean like i was in the keys last weekend and you know he's running not even thinking about it and i'm puckering up i'm starting to see the bottom you know i'm like (laughs) of course it's just clear you know we're just not used to seeing that around here yep 
Uh, but yeah, it's fun whenever it's get that time of year. I guess I'm sure the the lack of rain has a lot to do with it. Oh yeah, big time, big no, time. We've had good tidal movement, and then generally speaking, when your water temperature gets down, you get less growth in the water. It's a good point. Too. Um, that that gives it that green tint. And it uh it cleans up real good. That's always real typical of like what I would say uh fall and winter. Yeah. Winter time. Very cool, man. Well, Where let's get you? into this thing. You yes. ready to do the report? Yes, sir. All right, man. Let's go see what Bearded Brad's been up to. All right, man. Welcome back to the show. What you been seeing over there? What you been doing? Tell us the fish story. Hey, what's going on, guys, man? It it, it honestly has been a little bit of a struggle bus over here, surf fishing wise. I went out uh this past Friday and I went to one beach down Fort Morgan and it was covered with grass and we typically don't have the grass really hanging around this long but it has been all summer all fall we've just been struggling with the grass and um, ended up changing beaches went a little further east and found some clear spots and uh, was able to catch a few whiting we we went and pumped some ghost shrimp and we had some fresh dead shrimp as well and we're we're trying to target pompano. Um, typically, kind of late fall, you still have a little bit of a pompano run. I've seen some guys been catching some, and so that, that was our main target. And so, typically, when you go out with some ghost shrimp, you're usually going to find something. And so we had that, and all I caught was I think I had three decent whiting. But then as it, we had an outgoing tide then that morning, and as the tide kept going out, the grass just started showing up worse and worse and worse. And, they could be the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. By like 10 a.m., we couldn't even fish. It was just hmm. completely bombarded by grass. What kind of grass is it? I don't really know 100%. So it's not June grass, and it was not full-on sargasm. So I don't know. Like, it, it, it looks kinda, similar to um, sargasm, but it is yeah. a little more grassy-like. So, um, but it's not the green June grass. But Right. I don't so know that's, exactly uh, what it's called. But. That's called bryozoa. And that's actually, okay. that's actually not grass. It's a living organism. It's not, it's not grass. Okay. The, uh, the scientists have, uh, have learned me up down there. At the say, when did you come a botanist? Uh, <laughs> right. hey, man, I'm just saying I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good at retaining what I'm told, you know, yeah. <laughs> they taught me that in the good. Navy. Uh, on the beach, we just call everything grass. If it's getting on our right. line, we just call that's it right. grass. But. Yeah. And I can <laughs> tell you, we've, uh, we've run into a, a little bit of that, uh, here and there. Uh, and you can actually see the wads of it. It's like a, like almost looks like, brown, oh, yeah. like a brown, like a, like a yeah. brownish deal and uh i don't think it swims around or anything but it's actually a living organism it's not actually like or i I don't i'm gonna say organic but you know like uh right like what uh grass i don't think it's it's not photosynthesizing to to grow it's something uh, we'll have to get either crystal or dylan on here one day yeah uh, learn us up on that's definitely a pay grade yeah yeah Yeah. but uh but yeah Yeah, like you could see when when we got to the second beach like it was clear and you could see the dark patches further to the east and the wind, we had more of a north wind. It started shifting out of the east, and then you could just see it coming our way. And little by little, it just completely took over. And when it like when there's little patches, you can kind of go around it and deal with it. But when it gets in there thick, it is completely unfishable. Yeah, we've been seeing that. Uh, we've been seeing that on the southern end of uh, Mobile Bay when we've been doing a little bit of flounder fishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Doctor Doormat and I have been um, bumping into it here and there it hadn't been thick, yeah we've, thick, but we've it's been a hit or miss down it. at dixie bar as well right i can't picture what you're talking about um it it looks like like brad saying it kind of looks like uh sargasm but it's a little bit cl- it does look it's, it's clear it's underwater a little more but okay yeah I know what you're talking about. it's not really floating i've seen that before. not really floating up on the surface but it's kind of clear and it's uh kinda yeah all, i can see where that would make it unfishable but, for sure yeah really get around it yeah it kind of sticks together like a spider web yeah, as that current comes through, it's just going to grab that line, and especially throwing pompano rigs, it's going to uh, clump up on the floats and on your weight and all that. And once it once it covers the bait, like you're, you're done. Hmm. So as soon as you start reeling in and you got clumps of that grass on on your hooks and all that, like you're best off just to pick up and move spots. And it, it has been a little bit spotty. So if you are on one beach. Like you can probably, especially if it's clear skies and high sun, like you'll be able to see where the stuff is. So you can, you can bounce around and, and pick some other spots. So it's still fishable if you're willing to pack up and move around a little bit, but it's definitely a pain to deal with. Heck yeah. It's school. Um, it's schooled up right now. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. could you like, could you like throw plugs like top water stuff to get to kind of combat that or not really? You can. So a couple of weeks ago, we were down at Dixie Bar, and the the Jackson Reds have been on fire. 
And uh, we were down there, I can't remember exactly when it was, probably two weeks ago now. And it was the craziest thing I've ever seen down at Dixie Bar. Like there was thousands of pelicans diving all over the place. And Richard, you may have been out there this morning. There there was a lot of different captains out there, charter boats. Um, but it, it was wild. And so everybody was hooking jacks and reds. And so there was a little bit of grass. And so if you're throwing a plug in top water, um, you, you are going to be able to stay away from that a little bit. Because unlike the sargasm that's more floating, this stuff is a little bit more down in the water column. So top water, you are going to stay away from that. Now, once you start throwing a spoon or something that's going to get down, you are going to start dragging that stuff back up again. If you stay a little higher up in the water, you can kind sure. of avoid it a little bit. Yep, that Dixie Bar action uh, a couple of weeks ago was unreal. I was out there a couple of different days with uh, Crystal Hightower from the from the Sea Lab tagging bull reds, yeah. right? Yeah, we were doing some acoustic tagging with bull reds, and uh, man, that was some unbelievable fishing out there. Uh, it which was wild, I, like yeah. I was wishing I was in a boat because, like, I mean, they even came up the first school. Cause we, th- the morning I went out there, we went out there with cut bait, planning on just throwing out some mullet for some reds. And then it wasn't 20 minutes after the sun started coming up. You just saw pelicans everywhere. And I was like, you know, sometimes you see a bunch of pelicans and there's not always fish with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, there, there may not be anything there. Usually like seagulls, you know, there's a lot of times there's fish with them. But sometimes pelicans, you don't, you don't know for sure. And then they blew up. Jack started blowing up like, feet off the beach like i'm surprised they weren't beaching themselves they were blowing up and there's a ton of <laughs> men fun. and it, it was crazy like God, everybody was... was getting hooked up and we had like five or six people off the beach all hooked up at one time that's epic it was pretty crazy i call that the dixie but bar yeah, that, shuffle. That was like two weeks that's, again. <laughs> yeah that's the dixie bar shuffle man you're like going over and yeah. under each other and trying to I figure know. out whose lines crossed on whose yep. and all that that's some fun. at one point we're wrapped like three times and you're like going in and out and it's <laughs> It gets wild, but, but oh, that's yeah. what makes it exciting. Absolutely, man. Well, as far as like the whiting goes, what were you guys having success with that? Yeah, so I was catching, this was last Friday, I was catching the whiting. All of those were caught on ghost shrimp. So I was actually just throwing a pompano rig. Hmm. Um, a lot of times when I target whiting, I'll just use like a single drop, 10-pound fluorocarbon, like a little size four circle hook um, with just a bead and a little piece of fresh dead shrimp. That's typically how I target whiting. Um, but all these were actually further out, and they were just on uh, pompano rigs with um, some ghost shrimp. And the, nothing crazy to the size of them. I mean, they were all keepers. I kept them all. They were probably 10 to 12 inches maybe. Um, nothing crazy, but enough to take home and have some lunch. But right. That'll stink a skillet. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then after, after that grass moved in, we had to pack it up and call it a day. But I went back out on Monday. Um, so I guess a couple of days ago and went back to the same beach and it was the same thing. Got there. Everything was clear. And I had ghost shrimp and fresh dead shrimp as well. And, uh, didn't get any white. I caught a couple like little hardtails, but then I did have a whiting set up the same little 10 pound floor set up and got smoked by a pompano and caught one nice pompano. Nice. It was, I didn't measure him, but he was probably 16 inches or so, uh, which is a good one. size for this time of year. Heck yeah. um, haven't haven't had pompano in a while so we kept that one and uh, had some baked pompano for lunch but that sounds um, delicious. after that it did the ex- yeah absolutely it's hard hard to beat some pompano what's your best way to prepare that you said you bake you bake it whole how you do that no so i i don't bake them whole i'm i'm crazy but I, I don't i'm not crazy about picking the meat off the bones and all that so i did fillet it um, I left skin on. A lot of times when I clean pompano, I do leave the skin on because it is so thin. Sometimes it can be difficult to get the meat off of it without leaving skin or taking too much meat, all that. So I usually just cook it with the skin on. And so I just baked it and uh, just put a little bit like a light seasoning, some salt, pepper, garlic, and then ate it that way. And that was delicious. Yeah. Um, Cooked some ling last night. But oh, So good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say that's definitely better than Pompano. <laughs> I caught my first. I caught my first keeper one this year off those ships out there, and that stuff is delicious. Oh yeah, it is. It's the first time I ever ate it too. But so uh, I, a lot of people said I was crazy, but so this was the first one I caught. But I thought the meat was extremely similar to Wahoo. People told me I was like crazy, but it it's super white. It maybe doesn't have like the fatty rings or whatever like a wahoo does but i ate some of that cobia i ate sashimi i uh, ate it raw and it was i mean it was good oh yeah it's fine especially if you bleed it and treat it right yep 
Yeah. So Brad, talking about the pompano, um, how much, how much, how far into the fall do they, will they bite kind of moving in here towards, uh, the end of November in the first part of December or, or, are you guys going to be able to target those and see them on the beaches? So we're, we're definitely getting into the point that they're going to be few and far between, but we can catch pompano year round here. Uh, we will catch them pretty much every month of the year, but it's all going to depend on the water temps. As the which the water temps are still fairly warm, so they should still be around for a little while. But once we once we get a big cold front, it's pretty much going to die off, and that's when surf fishing can get pretty difficult. And you still have some good days of of lighting once we have all those cold fronts. Um, but then throughout the winter, we're really focusing on black drum because that's what comes a little more predominant throughout the winter months. And and that's a little more of a waiting game. You just got to sit out there and. It's nice because you don't have the the hardtails and the crabs and all these different bait stealers out there picking off your baits. You can actually let a bait soak without having to reel it in every 10 minutes and changing baits. But when, when you're targeting black drum, you can sit there for five hours before you get a bite. But usually when you get one, they are scrolling through and so you might get a few um, all at once. But if you're trying to target pompano throughout the month, like you're basically going to target them all the same. I like to throw ghost shrimp. Or fresh dead shrimp will work as well throughout the winter. And again, looking for those the warmer days with the the white water temps is typically what seems to be best for the pompano. Man, I can remember it's been a couple of years ago, but I can remember talking to the beach bum like and we were talking about like Christmas pompano, like whacking them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I guess it could so the happen. same thing happened last year. So it was probably like mid November, late November, it like died off and we weren't catching anything. Like the beach was pretty much dead. And then I went to Christmas for, or I went to Nashville for Christmas, and it was right before I left. Everybody just started whacking pompano. And the whole time I was gone, they were just killing them. Like people were limiting out on pompano <laughs> around Christmas, and I was I was up in Nashville, like freezing my butt off. I'm like, come on, guys! But isn't that the um, way it always works? I mean, you can definitely catch them. Yeah, you can definitely catch them year round. And it's I don't know because the I don't guess the water temp doesn't just like shoot up to the right temp in the middle of the winter so i don't know what causes one day to, or one week to be so much better than another mm, yeah. um I, I haven't studied it that deep but it it is interesting how how sometimes it'll be dead for a month and then all of a sudden you just have a week of, and it's just crazy and then it's dead again for two months <laughs> but, it, i would assume that that has everything to do with water temperature because i know just like speckled trout fishing in the winter and clarity i would have to assume too water yeah. clarity Speckled trout fishing in the winter time, they're very fickle fish where they'll move up on the flats and then go into a deep hole or vice versa. And that's what we see is on warm up periods, yeah. you'll see them come up out of the deeper water on the flats. It's easier for the fit, all of the fish to feed in shallower water because there's less water column. You know, there's right there's less water for them to try to feed you know they can either pin something on the bottom or get on the surface a lot less room for the prey to run away correct and it's got to be the same thought process with pumps as well um that they can the shallower water they can definitely feed uh, a little bit better and you know they're cold-blooded animals so the the water temperature coming up is going to bring their body temperature up it's going to bring they're going to feed more you know it's going to make their metabolism come up and 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 want need to feed so um, yeah yeah that's what Makes I would. Sense. That's just what I would assume uh, from that. Man, I'll start calling you Doctor Dick. You've been super scientific <laughs> today. I know, man. <laughs> you folks are getting knows ed- everything. You folks are getting educated today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever really patterned it out very well, but I know, like in the you know late winter, early springtime, whenever we're uh, goat roping, you know, catching mm-hmm. catching the sheep's out at the rigs in the Gulf and whatnot. Mm-hmm. The best days I've ever had on Pompano have been those days, uh, free line and shrimp, uh, in, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50 foot of water, almost mm. catching Pompano that really? way. Oh yeah. So like I said, I don't know that too many people have even been able to pattern right. the Pompano because yeah, there's so much other stuff I don't stuff know that there's there. ever been any sort of study or anything like that, that nobody's ever, I don't, I don't think anybody's ever tagged Pompano, but it would be interesting because there's a lot of people that debate on what Pompano really do, whether they're migratory or Go actually kind of hang around a little more. Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, I've heard of people catching them inshore in like Perdido Bay in February off of like this one dock. And so like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they may just go off to those near shore wrecks and kind of go a little deeper, like you're talking about. Who knows? Who knows, man? Well, it's shaping up to be a, a nice fall. Richard and I were talking about the beautiful water water clarity around. 
Mm-hmm. What are you What are you looking for like this weekend coming up? What are you gonna What are you gonna try and hone in and off the beach, or what you got going on? Oh uh, man, I don't know. Like, so the water. I went this morning, and the water was crystal clear. The water is beautiful. But again, it's just it's been a struggle off the beach. So I'm probably gonna go back out, and I'm gonna hit the beach again, and. uh try to see if i can get after some of these fall pompano we'll we'll see how it goes i mean they should be around so i caught one a couple days ago so just being there this time of year right time right place right bait because the the water temp is right and so the conditions are good for it so i'll I'll probably tackle that and see how it goes so just stick to the tactics that you know it sounds like make sure you have the ultimate bait uh, which sounds like ghost shrimp or fresh dead shrimp this time of year and just stick it out is that what you're saying yeah that that's pretty much my plan I like it, man. That's you a great do. plan. Yeah, that's a great report, man. We we appreciate you being on and sharing your wisdom with our listeners. If folks want to follow yeah, you on all the, yeah, man, all the medias, and I know you do a lot of YouTube stuff. I I definitely want to check out. I hope you made a video of the Dixie Bar Shuffle a couple of weeks ago. That sounds fun. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess that video is already up on YouTube. So you can check it out there. Bearded Brad. Awesome, man. Awesome, Bearded Brad. We'll check you out, dude. We appreciate the report, man. We look forward to talking with you next time. All right, thanks for having me, guys. All right, folks, it's always good to hear from old Bearded Brad. You guys take a quick break and check out a few of this week's sponsors. That segment was brought to you by CCA Alabama, a great way to support conservation projects like the Claude Petit Flounder and Speckled Trout Hatchery in the University of South Alabama Cobia Tagging Project is through the purchase of a distinctive CCA Alabama saltwater fishing license plate. You guys head over to Alabama Department of Revenue's distinctive license plate page at revenue.gov to get yours. And also brought to you by Photonist Defense. Photonis Defense is proud to offer the PD Pro line of night vision systems. The PD Pro series is the world's smallest and lightest night vision goggles built around the Photonis 16 millimeter filmless 4G image intensifier tubes in their hybrid filmless 18 millimeter image intensifier tubes. These ultra light, ultra compact night vision systems deliver cleanest images, best resolution, smallest, most transparent halo and best overall performance and function of any night vision system available. The PDR Pro line consists of the PD Pro M 16 millimeter monocular, the PD Pro B 16 millimeter binocular, and the PD Pro Q panoramic night vision system. Photonist Defense, Masters of Darkness. Well, Butch, let's go. Uh, let's go check out an inshore report. Like we need any more inshore knowledge on this uh, show with me and you sitting here together. But uh, right. let's see. Let's see what Positive Pat at Ugly Fishing's doing today. How you doing, Bud? Doing well, man. Out here. Out here actually fishing at the moment, just checking out some other waters that I didn't get a chance to look at today. Heck yeah, you sound like me. Just uh, every time you get done with a trip, you want to go back out and do some more homework or figure out what you messed up or, or something like that. And I, th- I think that's something that's good for all, uh, as an as inshore guide, you know, to definitely not lose the fire in our souls about going uh, going fishing. Just get out there by your, I love fishing by myself. Go out there and collect my thoughts and just chunk and wine man and yep. and let it happen mm-hmm. i think that's good for the soul well in this time of year i assume yeah. you guys you guys kind of have to do that keep your finger on the pulse this changing rapidly it oh seems yeah like. they on they on the boogie <laughs> that's what it seems like yeah the convenient part of it, or the nice part of it is the weather you know it's always like you get this you get these just nice pretty days start out a little cool in the morning and warm up and man it's just so nice to be on the water it's uh it's hard it's hard to go home yeah no <laughs> doubt it's my i was telling richard this morning right now this is my favorite time of the year to be on the water yep been sweating for so long and man it's just nice to be a little chilly i know and that's that's the thing i really like about it too is that you just don't feel so fatigued at the end of the day for when sure you're not been pour- sweat that's pouring right. out of your body all day you know you just uh it's easy to keep on fishing i mean i, I know dr uh dr doormat and i we've been doing a lot of flounder pounding lately i don't ever want to quit you know right. Not sweating. <laughs> if, I, like you if said. I didn't have to go wrangle kids and uh and and, and everything in the afternoons man i'd heck i'd fish till the sun went down every day right now you know it's <laughs> yep. it's very enjoyable time on the water well patrick uh what uh what have you been hitting on here lately uh what have you been patterning out yeah where you been uh i think i've here recently, I think I've, everything has been Causeway, just launching on the Causeway and fishing, fishing in this region, catching fish both north and south of the Causeway. Finally, speckled trout have been uh, starting to cooperate. Um, nothing, nothing like on fire, but putting some stuff together, putting a few, a uh, few nice trout in the box, 
um, had a couple over 20 or right at 20 inches today. So that was nice. Oh, cool, man. That's good to hear. Yeah. And they're, these are some of the fattest trout. So these fish, you know, we've been talking about where are they, where are they, why aren't they biting? They have been feeding. There is no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> They've been putting on a little weight. <laughs> they have been they have been putting on the pounds, man. They have got the LBs going on. They are uh John Burke says when they got the zipper belly, that means they're as big around as they can get. That's and right. these, most all these trout, it doesn't matter if they're if they're thirteen inches or if they're twenty inches, they all have that zipper belly. So I know exactly Real what you're nice. talking about. Real nice to see what we're uh, the the quality of the fish that we're finding. I tell you the one thing that's that's a little bit that's that's a little bit troubling to me is a lot of these fish that we're catching were were just fishing and then we're getting a bite and power pulling down or spot locking the trolling motor depending on what the depth is. And once you catch one, there's there's several more in that area. And the reason I say it's a little troubling is because there's not a lot of like visual clues to say, hey, uh, you know how they are when they start putting slicks up. Like Richard said, they're waving at you, saying, "Hey, here we are. We're over here. <laughs> we're not getting a lot of. <laughs> we're not getting a lot of those like super neon sign clues out there. So the the downside is you're having to fish to find them, but when you do find a, a bite or two. There's there's quite a few around in it's the shallower say, water. It's funny you said that about the sign this morning. Whenever you and I were looking for redfish, I said I don't see no billboards. Yeah, they weren't exactly right. they weren't giving themselves <laughs> away. So it's funny you say it that way. Yeah, and uh, so the uh, the shallow water stuff uh, earlier has been, or I guess earlier this week seemed like they were they were more cooperative on like the voodoo's and swim baits and stuff like that just the plastic and then as we've gone a little further into the week they've uh they've gone to more of a a live shrimp kind of game Mm. fishing a little bit slower uh but once you got a bite like i said if you if you got a bite and you can stop your drift and and just fish an area out kind of slow you were able to get a um able to put a few more fish in the boat so that's been my the speckled trout game shallow water we're finding a few in some river channels we can see some of those fish on the fish finder side side vision and down vision you can see some of these fish and and a lot of white trout are mixed in with the specks or or maybe maybe it's more of the specks being mixed in with the white (laughs) trout been a bunch of those Uh, for sure yeah there's and it's a lot of little ones too uh like like eight eight inch little six inch and eight inch little white trout they're uh they're, they'll sit there and peck your grub to death <laughs> so better, <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna go out there with some little slicks like we've been jigging with better take you a pocket full because those little white trout are just tearing that thing up it looks like it's running through a meat grinder and you and you're like and you look back you're like man i just took that lure off it's all tore up and i caught like three fish on it <laughs> so um the white trout are, are definitely chewing us up pretty good and well, um, uh well it's it's really yeah, good go to hear ahead. that uh that some of that's kind of coming together because i mean i don't know what your thoughts on it but i feel like for a typical fall pattern given the conditions we've had the water temperature all that thing all, all those all those things considered i feel like we're like a month the fish are like a month behind where they should be you know, as, a, uh, you know, just going off of history, what we've done in the past. Um, and here we are the very first part of November, and we're just now starting to see some of that activity, like you're talking about, uh, above and below the causeway. That's usually like early October, mid October kind of stuff to me. That, hmm. Definitely. Be, cool, uh, be uh, cool to go back and listen to shows this time last year. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago to see what the pattern was. Oh, I can, I'm pretty sure I can tell you it was, <laughs> there was, there was a lot of speckled trout to be caught south of the Causeway in October, the last couple of years. And, and they, and it's, it's been a, it's been a pretty vicious yo-yo in, in the speckled trout world for sure. Like one day you're like, all right, I'm a hero. And the next day you're like, oh, I'm a zero. Yeah. <laughs> go back to the drawing boy. Got to go back to school, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's yep. the name of the game. It sounds like. 
Yeah, the other species uh, with some shrimp, we're we're catching we're catching some catching some sheephead, occasional redfish. I haven't really just landed on many just like solid redfish bites lately, and putting in putting in a little bit of effort for it. So I don't really have anything of any clues or tips on 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 putting more of those guys in the boat right now. And then, uh, as far as also fishing with some shrimp, you've run across some, run across some puppy drum, and um, and actually a big flush of uh, freshwater catfish kind of mixed in with some of these specks of white trout. So mm. you can, uh, you if you're keeping fish, man, you can go home with a with a, a very unique box of fish. Yep, you got my ears perked up at uh, freshwater catfish. That's one of my favorite things to eat. So and, <laughs> yeah, I, wish, I always say, man, I wish I was better at catching them or figuring them out because, man, that's some tasty stuff, especially some of those Delta cats Yep, are very tasty. Oh, yeah. The joker's down there eating all them shrimps and stuff, man. Oh, yeah. Living the high life. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we talked about redfish a little bit up there. Uh, anything in particular on those guys or just kind of the usual incidentals on the bottom? Man. Yeah, for me, the redfish bite has been a little bit more on the incidental side of things, and and a lot of them were showing up uh, where we were flounder fishing before uh, before the closure. Hmm. We were uh, we were catching some reds mixed in with the uh, with with the where we were flounder fishing. Man, I tell you what, it it it's pretty crazy. They were by the flounder flounder game was real strong up until a couple of days ago, and it really really tapered off to where it's just maybe one one per day or two per day something like that so i guess those babies are moving south yeah dr doormat and i've been we've been pounding the flounders pretty hot and heavy the past uh three weeks and we definitely noticed a little bit of a fall off too we're trying to get our last couple of acoustic tags out this week and uh man it came to it came down to some just grinding days, man. And heck, it's weird too. I don't really think about flounder being like an early morning, late afternoon, any kind of time of day issue with them. But it seemed like for a couple of days, we couldn't get a bite past like 11, 12 o'clock hmm. uh, in the day. It was like we were just spinning our wheels all day, basically. You know, um, they finally cooperated for us uh, yesterday pretty good. But of course, we're being picky too about where we're trying to put those tags out. We're trying to get them out in the tidal river so that we can see them, uh, see them leave, and then yeah, the acoustic gate. Yep, and then hopefully come back to the river. So uh, after they go offshore and spawn and come back, we've seen them come back to the same rivers, and we want to see that as well. So, but it definitely got definitely got tough on us as well. The past, you know, like you said, past couple of days, we did real well on them this morning. Uh, Butch and I went. Uh, with Jim Ising and Bill uh, Faulkner down to uh, out of Bayou La Battery and did real well in Flinders down there this morning. There's still plenty of fish around, even though they're closed. Yeah, I mean, we had closed for the season. 12 by 9? Yeah, yeah, by about 9 o'clock, yeah. Oh, man, that's, that's solid right there. Yeah. Well, we were, it was funny because Richard said yesterday that, that the Goblin, we were using Slick Juniors, the Goblin was a ticket like the darker bait was the ticket yesterday. Yep. And I had on um, the Ozark Shiner Slick Junior this morning and i didn't even get a, a rub me either and jim had on i think he had on the p-mint and started catching several nice ones and i was like give me, give me one of them penguins <laughs> and, <laughs> and then it was lights out both richard and i both went to brighter colors so there's obviously something there with have you ever noticed that patrick uh like uh find a really honing in on a color like a dark one or a, a bright one you know given the conditions and whatnot yeah, and I I feel like it has a lot to do with the the sky more than the watercolor. I tend to go, I tend to try to, I tend to try to look at, you know, if it's a bright sky, try to have something. I mean, I'll, I'll experiment. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily say that a bright sky is this lure, but like I'll try to go from one extreme to the other and go like with that sand lapper or the ice candy or something like that something real light with and then um and then if that's not hitting then go with something dark like so like the goblin or or that uh mad mullet or something like that yeah that and, that, uh, and yeah we, I see, and it'll be and that'll be the case like it's it's gonna be one or the other a lot of times i mean it was very clear today i was surprised yeah i just made a clear choice it's right. very obvious uh 
so so Bill Bill Fal uh, Faulkner with uh, you know the new owner of Anglers Resource was with us today, and he asked me about colors. How do you go about mm -hmm. you know uh, picking your color and whatnot? And I was like, in my opinion, there's two colors. You know, there's bright and there's dark. You know, and uh, obviously. It didn't take Butch and I too long after yep. watching those guys whack a few fish and us being right in the same area to to, to swap over uh, yep. to that bright color and get that going. It, it, is that is that about the same thought process for you, Patrick, or what is your thought process? That's exactly where I like to go. Um, but I tell you the the one of the colors that stands out to me really stands out to me when we're talking about the Slick Lure brand stuff is the swamp thing with a gray or just overall just kind of darker, cloudier conditions seems to really be a great color and regardless of water quality. Yeah. I was going to say that swamp thing color is a special color. In my opinion, it, it just blows my mind. You, it looks good when you hold it in your hand, right? And you're rigging it up, man. You drop that joker in the water and look at it in the water. Oh, yeah. And it like electrifies. It glows. Yeah. yeah it electrifies right. almost. Uh, they really hit the nail on the head yeah. with that uh, swamp thing. And i tell you another color that you just brought up that uh, really perked my eyes up that I'm completely out of is the ice candy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you were the, showing me that one this morning. Yeah, for those flatter. I think I only have like one left out of like a... Oh, it was a, it was a dead body you yeah, showed me for sure. Yeah, it was like, I, I think I had like <laughs> just started off with 24 of them and I have none left right now. I think. Yeah, it looks good. I haven't tried that one yet, but it's pretty. Man, it has been unbelievable in flounder for me. I think it's, they like that different color tail. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that like a uh, clear head body with some specks and it's got that bright orange tail. Yeah. yeah. Pink, pink tail. Pink. Yeah. Pink tail. That's right. It's like an opening night body with a pink tail. I just love pink in general for flounder, man. Sometimes they are just going nuts over it, mm. uh, over pink. That's one of my favorite colors for flounder has been pink this year. I don't know why, but mm. I just seem whatever works. I've definitely gravitated towards the pink. Yeah. I wonder what they see it as. Ain't no telling. Heck no. That's uh that's one of the uh questions I have for St. Peter when I get to <laughs> the right. Pearling Gates, man. <laughs> right. Why do the fish like Richard, pink and chartreuse? Can... Chartreuse, yeah, that's another good one. <laughs> Richard, you always you always say that's your St. Peter question. It sounds like you need to start keeping your log of all the questions you got for St. Peter. There, <laughs> <That's right>. because... <laughs> <laughs> so like you have a questionnaire for him. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's a good report, Captain Patrick. It's always good to hear from you. Man, if folks want to book a trip, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, the easiest thing to do any time of the day, go to uglyfishing.com, and you've got all my contact information, all my social media, uh, and then you can book online as well. If uh, you got any questions or concerns or whatever, you can call me or shoot me a text at 251-747-1554. Awesome, buddy. Patrick. I really, I really like that. Any time of the day, huh? Anytime so your day. website doesn't open and close at a certain time. Huh? Always, open. always open. Always well, open. I like, I yeah. like that. Always man. open. Always yeah. open. Yeah. Golly, I, I might not think about doing that with my website. <laughs> yeah, I worked a deal with Google on that one to make That's sure right. it stayed open all the time. Do you have time. to pay? Yeah. Do you have to pay extra for that, or is that free? <laughs> Um, I ain't giving away all my secrets on this show, Richard. <laughs> oh man, come on now. Oh man, well, we appreciate it, buddy. Thank Be you, safe Patrick. out there. Great yeah, talk to you, buddy. Hope, hope you find some new spots this afternoon. Let me know where you've been. All right, Thank thanks, you buddy. Well, I guess we did say that we were going to have Captain Bobby Abrascato on the show, but I think he fell asleep by his pool, <laughs> so we had to get Captain Patrick Garments, and that's a great report from Ugly Fishing. You guys, take a quick break and check out a few of this week's sponsors. That segment was brought to you by Admiral Shellfish. Admiral oysters are available at select restaurants and can also be purchased by the public at Bon Secours Fisheries, Inc. and Ahi Seafood in Fairhope, Alabama. Call for availability. From a simple, nutrient-dense appetizer at home or a shucking party with friends, Admiral oysters will steal the show. Follow their adventures on Instagram at Admiral Shellfish Co. And also brought to you by United Bank. United Bank knows what an important role agriculture plays in our local economy. At United Bank, they are here to support local farmers with financial products and services designed specifically for agribusiness, including real loans for farmland, equipment loans, working lines of credit, and more. 
Truth is, they deeply value the contributions agriculture makes to our communities, and they help our local farmers build successful businesses. They want to see you succeed. Learn more at unitedbank.com or stop by any United Bank branch. United Bank, all loans subject to credit approval, equal housing opportunity lender, member FDIC. All right, Captain Richard, let's round this thing out. Let's head offshore, man. Let's see what Captain Delenn Sigler's been doing over out of Orange Beach, Alabama. Welcome back to the show, Captain Delenn. How are we doing? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. I'm doing great. How are y'all? Doing good, man. We had a good day. We got to get out and rip some lips this morning. Well, we were careful with the lips. We didn't rip them. We tagged them and released them for science. But <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. Cut yeah. yeah. uh, you your string a little bit. That's right, man. It was fun. I haven't been what, out in a that's couple. That's all about what uh, we hadn't we hadn't used the phrase "a tug is a drug" in a while on the show. At least I haven't. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, here. That's the, that's the damn truth for me, man. What about you, Captain Delenn? Is that what gets is that what gets your rocks off, man? Is a tug, man. I tell you what, I don't care what it is as long as it stretches my string. I'm good. I'm good. So yeah. I just I have I have very very little patience. So anybody's ever fished with me will tell you that. I'm like, if they're biting, let's catch them. If not, I want to get some more of their biting. So I like whatever pulls my string. Oh, yeah, that's me too. Uh, I call it uh, being an ADD fisherman, you know? Yep. <laughs> and yep. uh, sometimes it really works to your advantage and sometimes it works to your disadvantage. But I feel like it does it does yeah. me better uh, more days than not, man. But uh, I'm definitely like that. That's always my thought process, though, like kind of getting into fishing about it, uh, getting to the fishing thing about uh, about this is, I, I literally, I feel like the fish are always biting somewhere. You know what I mean? And if they're not biting That's where right. you're at, man, you need to change venue, go to a different river, go to a different bay, run your boat. You know, yep. some days I'd feel like they don't, uh, you know, inshore speaking wise, uh, they're not going to bite till I burn 20 gallons of fuel. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. it's just, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta make big moves. Oh yeah. It'll yeah. be that way sometimes. And man, most of the time it pays off more times than not. You know what I mean? You get into a little area, you know, and make kind of some, a funky area. Something you, might be a little just off. Yeah. Make you a couple of good pass through it, through an area. You don't do any good, anything freaking pick up and freaking keep on, keep on uh sticking, yep. stick and move, you know, Yep. especially this time of year. I'm so bad, like I'm like drop right here, and I'll be holding the boat, and I turn around and look, and somebody's fumbling around with a coke or whatever, and going to get a bait. I'm like, no, nah, you just wait. <laughs> you know, we may not be here long enough for that. So if they're not That's biting. Fine. We're going to be reeling up before you ever get to the bottom. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bad myself. Well, sweet. Well, uh, well, you sent Butch some uh, real nice, real nice picks uh, from from uh, one of your recent trips, uh, either earlier this week or last week. Uh, what what uh, what do you guys been targeting and uh, and uh, how you been catching them? Well, you know, uh, we went Friday before that front hit, and um, it was early in the week. They were talking like it was going to hit later that night, so it was going to be beautiful Friday. And and then when I got up, actually Thursday night, I looked at it, and it looked like the front was pushing a little quicker than they thought. And I got up that morning, Friday morning, I'm like, by 1 o'clock, it's going to be blowing, boys. So we need to get on out there and get them and get back. So we didn't leave as early as we should have. Um, we left about 7, 15, 7, 30, but – Bait fishing was good. Fishing was excellent. Our first stop, we caught 10 amber jacks, threw two back, kept eight, 120 foot of water on pinfish. I mean, just fast as you could run it. I mean, they were on fire. Wow. Big public wreck. You know, everybody in the world knows about it. And uh, we just pulled up there like it had never been fished. They were just on fire. So then we pushed out a little bit deeper water. And um, Almaco's, all you want to catch Almaco's. You go out there that 200 plus foot of water, all the Almaco's on natural bottom, you can stand to catch. They're not giants, but they're, you know, seven, eight, 10 pounders with a few 12, 15 pounders thrown in. But, you know, they're great eating and you can put them in a box. Yep. Excellent. And then we caught a limited snappers. We had uh, 16 snappers and most of those were 12, 14 pounders. And we uh, stayed a little bit longer than we should have. We caught one gag and one scamp. Uh, We tried that for about an hour and a half when we should have been going home. And about one o'clock, it started blowing. So <laughs> we had an hour and a half ride home. It was pretty pretty rough. Well, uh, speaking but, of uh, uh, having a rough ride home, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw that you're uh, you're, you're running a new boat uh, these days. What uh, what are you fishing out of now? Uh, we were fishing out of a 40 foot Invincible Cat, um, which is a great platform. I mean, there's so many good features about that boat. Um, it rides good. It's a little bit wet. But it, man, when you get there, it just sits like you're fishing on a barge. Uh, it's, it holds up amazing, super, super steady in the water. It doesn't rock. No need for a sea keeper on an invincible cat, I can tell you that. It, it's as smooth <laughs> as any boat's got a sea keeper. 
Uh, it's yeah. amazing. It's simply amazing. It's just like sitting on a barge. Um, so I love it. It's got three live wells. It's got multiple fish boxes. Um, it's a fishing machine. It's got crazy amount of rod holders. I, I'm, I don't even know how many, but it's got a lot of rod holders. Don't Man, take a lot of rods. Yeah, it's it's fun when you get on a boat and there's just, just rod holders everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like when you need because because you know how how quickly things always, happen. Always got to put a rod yeah, down. Like yeah. today, how many times we throw a rod down for the net? Yep. Yeah, you, yep. you, uh, you always, you know, uh, everything always happens so fast on a boat and when you're fishing and everything, to, you never know what's going to bite, what's going to have come up at you. And it's nice to have rod holders to throw a gaff somewhere, put an extra rod somewhere, move them from one side to the other. You know, you're not like trying to find a spot or taking one rod out to put another one in the yep. you know, just throw one in a rod holder and go, go do what you got to do and then come back, you know, and then all the different angles that they offer. Yep offer the rod holders at you know you can get those vertical ones 30 degree ones 15 degree ones however you want them man it's, it's, I, I just i love that about the big boats now you know yep. about the big Cup holders and rod holders you can never have enough oh, of. No. <laughs> yeah. rod holders are to fishermen like shoes are to win most women i mean you just can't have enough <laughs> that's right and, and this boat, <laughs> i'd be scared to say how many it's got but it's gotta have at least i don't know 35 rod holders maybe oh yeah okay it's, 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 they're everywhere oh man um, it's got a bunch it's got rod. and then when you get you take six guys offshore you gotta have six bait rods you gotta have six four rods you gotta have six chicken rigs you gotta have six grouper rods yeah you know if they add up in a hurry then you gotta have a pitch rod and then you have a rod with a, a steel leader on it and you gotta have a cobia jig on one and, and yeah it adds up in a hurry Yep, I'm definitely like that uh, on the inshore side of things. Whenever I go, I, I have I have certain setups. That's the only thing that's tied up to that rod, you know. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have one for every angler, kind of like what you're talking about. And uh, man, that makes life so much easier on a boat versus having to stop what you're doing, cut something off, oh, yeah. rig it up again, you know. Because when it's hot, it's hot. I mean, you could be missing out on multiple fish. For sure, for sure. Um, yep. So, Delin, do you, you really like the uh, you like the way that boat handles and rides uh, this Gulf this Gulf of Mexico chop? I do. the uh, The Invincible has a semi symmetrical hull, so it rides a little more like a mono hull than most cats. It doesn't roll, and it doesn't roll away from the turn as much as as most cats do. Right. Um, I'm a big fan of Freeman, but the Freeman just rolls. It'll scare the heck out of you sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I've um, never been on a Freeman. I so fished on thing, both of Adam Peoples. I think he had a 40 and then a 44. Mm -hmm. I've never been on a Freeman, but that Invincible is impressive. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Adam's running up the 46 now, and I think that's what we're going to step up to. Wow. Oh, cool. What is what is that one you have run now? What does it cruise at? You know, and, and you said it got a little rough uh, on the way home. I'm curious to see what rough was to you and what you ran at. Yeah, we, we like to cruise like 47 on that boat as well. I like to cruise. But, like, on the way home, we started out about 47. But before we got back to the pass, we were down to, like, 33, 34, um, yeah. which is still pretty good. But we were side-seeing yeah. them, and it was a solid four-foot seas. But we were side-seeing them, so that makes all the difference. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, it, it'll run. It, it's a pretty nice boat. And that's cool, man. The uh, <laughs> Just the whole offshore center console game is, is – It has just, gotten insane. Is, it's such a game changer these days. How many things you can go do in one day? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, cause you can just, if you're not, if you're not worried about how much fuel you're burning, you know, I mean, you can get to one, you know, point A to point B in a hurry, Yeah, you know, and go, uh, go, go bill fishing in the morning and then start, uh, maybe make, maybe make a, a drop for a swordfish and then hit grouper spots on your way home and then do this and do that. I mean, you can do so yeah. many things in one and be day. home by 2 PM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that that's what's so neat about it uh, is, is just the, the huge platform, the speed. Versatility. And yeah, speed and efficiency. Uh, definitely changed the game. How much fuel does that one hold, Captain Delenn? Uh, this one has a small tank. This is the older boat. It's a 2019, so it only holds, it only holds two, uh, 650 gallons. And I think the new ones hold 800 or 850, something like that. So, which, which is, you know... 650 is not small. Yeah. <laughs> That's which, a you, lot of money to put fuel in, but we don't burn that much fuel. But um, if you, you think know, back about, in the day, just, it was just going to say, if you I'm think sorry, about how crazy that is, the escape holds like a thousand or 1100 pounds. It's a 65 by 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it, pretty wild to think about. Yeah. Golly. Yep. But back in the day, I told everybody my average trips were 30 to 50 miles out. Well, those days are gone. You know, my average trips now are, 
40 to 90 miles out. Right. And so, like I said, used to, uh, you know, you went to the promised land, you went 75 miles out. Well, you were there. I mean, you're committed. Oh, yeah. By the time you got there, you only had a little while to get it done. And if the current was bad or the water was bad, you just had a really bad day. Well, now if I run 60 miles, like, oh, the water's bad, let's run another 30 miles. It's not even a big deal. You know? yeah, right. Like, yeah. We'll, yeah. 15 we'll minutes. We'll be there yeah. in 35 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is crazy, uh, man. So now I just, just it just opens up the whole world to me. I can go wherever I want, whenever I want. Man, that's really cool. That's really cool. Well, they uh, closed Amberjack right November one, so those guys are Amberjack's out. Amberjack's gone. So. No sense in harping on those. Uh, I saw some nice grouper. You guys got natural bottom. Any any particular thing tricks on those? I haven't targeted grouper a whole lot. We just did a little bit the other day. But if you're going to target grouper right now. Wrecks are natural bottom um, in the deeper water. If you're going to do natural bottom, get away from that big giant stuff that everybody and their brother knows about. And it's, it's seen 500 hooks this year. Find that little bitty stuff, you know. There's a little bitty rock, you know, right over there. It's, it's holding five fish, but when you drop down, those five fish haven't seen a hook all year, and they're just jumping all over it. You know, you put them in the box, and you go find another little rock. Don't fish those big ridges, those big rocks. This time of year, they've been hammered. Unless you're running 80 miles offshore, don't fish that big stuff. How are you finding, I mean, I assume le- electronics, and you may have some little honey holes, but as far as those little unmolested rocks, how are you finding those? Here's what I do, because I have a fast boat, and it doesn't read real well at 50 miles an hour. So go where you want to go fishing. Say so I'm going to run 46 miles out, you know, and this is where I like to fish this area. So I just fished this rock. Slow down. Don't run because you're going to go four miles to your other one. Don't run 50 miles an hour. Slow down to 18. Put your Wahoo lures out, whatever. Whatever the fastest you can go and still read the bottom. And and just watch your bottom machine. That's the best holes you'll ever find in your life. And I, and most times, the best hole you fish that day is the one you found. And yeah, the reason you found it is the that. fact that we fish. You ran over it, and it blows up with fish, and it sticks out like a sore thumb, where most days you would have just not even noticed it. And you spin around on it, and it's just hubbed up with fish, and you just bail them. Now, you might go back there next week and not be a fish on it, but today it was. Yeah, uh, I, I, I like that. I like that thought process a lot, and that's something that I like to do when I go offshore is kind of in between spots. You're making a two- or three-mile jump, something like that. I do exactly what you said. I'll put the Wahoo lures out. Yeah, especially this time along, of year. And just sit there and hit the man overboard button. You know what I mean? As you're, as you're easing along and then uh, come back, come back either next trip or later that day and, and try them out. And uh, those are a hundred percent. The best spots you find are the ones that you, when you, when you slow down a little bit and, uh, yep. and start looking for that kind of stuff. Cause in this day and age, everybody's got the Seymour map. Everybody's got the Garmin chip. Everybody's got, all these different uh yep. locating map- tools yeah, yeah all these different mapping uh these bathymetric bathymetric mapping systems on their boats <laughs> like you said <laughs> just skip over the big stuff yep. you know what i mean and find that little stuff the little little humps and yep and same thing goes for for you know even just running out i know it's different and i think it's um i don't know what you you know came up fishing on but you know i mean growing up on the lady ann i mean it, 10 or 12 knots i mean that's what you were running oh, out yeah. at yep. and you ran over right. a bunch a bunch a bunch of stuff and i took my dad this year on my blackjack a couple of times and uh he drove some and i drove some and he was driving me nuts when he was driving because he would be driving in between the spots at 15 mile an hour i'm like put the hammer down on this sucker let's get yeah. there <laughs> he's like you young bucks need to slow down a little bit <laughs> I, I, love I was this, talking man. to a captain I was talking to a captain buddy of mine just last week, and he says, you know, we're regressing. We started out with the only way we ever got anything was build it or run over it. Mm-hmm. And then all these chips come out, and we threw all that to the wind. And, man, we're just running as hard as we can get there to get to these big rocks and fish and stuff. And then now they're kind of getting wiped out. And, you know, this year, last year, the year before, I've, I've kind of regressing going back to, hey, let's slow down and find the ones that nobody knows about. And um, that's what I've been doing. Yep. I'll never forget. I can't remember if it was last year, or the year before last, uh, Captain King that runs the lady in now, uh, was catching some really nice Wahoo, like right past the ships, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 12, 15 miles off of uh, dolphin Island. 
And it was just eating me alive seeing these pictures and everything. And I was like, man, I'm going out there one afternoon. I'm going to go pull lures all, you know, all afternoons. Me and Triple C got on the boat and uh, went pulled Wahoo lures at like 14, 16 knots. And I sat there. I think I found like 14 spots. Yep. You know, just, just run going, a lot going of fish. nice and slow. And it's unbelievable. And, and they, were, they ended up being some great, yeah. uh, great numbers. Uh, I have no idea what any of them are. Uh, probably just chicken coops folks no are putting out and whatnot but yeah. very relatively low pressure on all of them uh to to the yeah. best i could see it's just it's just amazing when you slow down a little bit it which is fine yeah. i don't know why i don't do that more often because it's very productive because we're always in a hurry oh yeah <laughs> gotta get in gotta get out you know <laughs> you throw these cell phones down yep. there for reefs you know pretty to much slow, to slow down some huh yep yep i know some of the best spots i found over the years it's because it was four foot seas and it forced me to slow down and <laughs> you couldn't run fast so i'd have ran right by them and never found them so yeah. in fact i've got one called uh the six spot where we had to slow down for somebody to throw up because it was so rough and <laughs> ran over it and it was loaded with fish the six spot i uh -huh. like it man that's, that's a good one that's good i always uh always enjoy uh when you find a new spot you know what 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 the what the name what the name of it ends up being one of my yep. uh <laughs> One of my best, like real, real close snapper numbers off of uh off of Dolphin Island. It's only it's only about like twelve miles off the beach, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's been a it's been a fantastic number. Uh, I was on spring break with uh, my son, uh, running him and his buddy around catching fish and we ran over a spot and uh, there's a bag of, he was eating a bag of fritos right so what i named the spot the fritos you know it's so, it's just funny you know it's funny how uh it, 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 like all my friends who fish with me that know oh we're going to fritos today you know yep. <laughs> yeah that's yep. funny same thing with hunting spots you know like oh, that's yeah. the that's the broken tailgate stand you know that's right, right. Oh, my man. wife's name is connie joe and she has so many spots named after her. It's just crazy. The Connie Joe spot, Connie Joe's grouper, Connie <laughs> Joe's big snappers. And he just gets a kick out of that. So every time she's on the boat, I name the spot after her. I oh, like that's it. Awesome, I like it. Well, you mentioned bait. You said that the Amberjack were crushing the pinfish. Um, did you guys have to sabiki any up? Anything changed there? Last time we talked, you were kind of starting, I believe, in about 40 foot of water, 30 foot of water um on sand and just finding those bait clouds on your machine and catching them up anything changed there um well we set our pinfish traps so we had one well had about 75 pinfish in it and then yeah we went out there and started about 35 40 feet of water and started catching um cigar minnows and, and different things and uh we tried to go out and catch some herrings uh we just didn't find any so we had a uh, pinfish cigar minnows a few goggle eyes uh, and things like that. So just the normal old bait, a bunch, bunch of cigar mess. Tell me about these goggle eyes. I keep hearing folks talk about goggle eyes. I've never seen a goggle eye, I think in person. And then the folks who I know who do, do catch them, it's, it, it, it seems like it's almost a real specific thing, either structure or water depth or something they're looking for. Does you have any kind of trick or any kind of rhyme or reason to what you're doing with those? Cause like I said, I, I I've never, I don't even think I've ever put my eyeballs on one. So, okay, from now to early spring, you can catch them in the shallower water, just like up there, catching cigar minnows in 30 feet of water. Even, I've caught them in 15, 20 feet of water. So, they're generally pretty small if you catch them inshore, but not always. But, like I said, from now until early spring through February, you can catch them inshore. But you catch the bigger ones offshore, uh, deeper up, you know, 100, 200, 300, whatever. Um, they're just out there, on, and you find them on sand bottom, you find them on rock. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So I don't like to go 30 miles offshore looking for bait because if you get out there and you don't find them, then you're done. So I, yeah. I'd rather spend the time here getting them and then go out there hope you find some more. Yeah, no doubt. They look kind of like a cigar minute. They just got a bigger eye on them. That's right. Yeah. Are you just using standard sabiki rig for those uh, when you're getting that deeper water, just put more weight on get down to, to where yep. they're at? Yep. Um, they'll bite the smaller sabikis better, but the bigger ones will hold them on a little better. So it's kind of a catch twenty two, you know. Um, right. Yep. You're reeling them up. You get bite, but you lose a lot more. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're reeling them up from a hundred foot deep. Yeah. That's got a, a little, a little bigger hook, get a little bit more meat on the bone. Yep. With that hook, yep. probably does work better. Yep. Well, Captain so, Land, that's a that's a great report, man. We always enjoy hearing from you. We appreciate you sharing your knowledge with our listeners. It's always a good report, man. We look forward to hearing from you next time. Thank you for being on. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate y'all having me on. 
you guys take a quick break and check out a few of this week's sponsors. That segment was brought to you by l and Marine. l and Marine has something for everyone from small hunting boats, pontoon boats, to bigger bay boats and offshore hybrids. l and Marine LLC prides itself on its customer service and knows how important it is to have someone you can trust and to be taken care of. They are locally owned and regularly support the community. l and Marine provides superior customer service and has an entire team that consists of professional sales members, finance experts, service technicians, and a knowledgeable parts and accessory staff to support you. Go visit their friendly, reliable, and experienced staff now located only six miles north of I-10 at 34600 Highway 59 in Stapleton, Alabama, or give them a call at 251-937-1380. And also brought to you by Foster Contracting, Fortified Roofing Pros. The recent thunderstorms that have been producing wind and hail in the area may have damaged your home's roof. The certified roofing pros at Foster Contracting offer free roof inspections, and if your roof has received damage, most homeowners will have little or no cost out of pocket when going through your insurance. If you're looking for quality construction with a dependable, licensed, and certified Fortified Roofing professional, give the Fortified Roofing Pros a call at 251-973-9999. They're a family-owned business that is big enough to get the job done, but small enough to care remember to support the local businesses that make your local podcast possible and check them out at fortifiedroofingpros.com all right cap you know we got to do what did you learn before we get out of here today what'd you pick up from today's show i really enjoyed talking with captain patrick as always uh he is just uh he <laughs> he's uh y'all keep messing with me about being a, <laughs> a half-assed scientist <laughs> on here you know but he he is literally the mad scientist on uh on the inshore game. And I really enjoyed talking with him when we started talking about colors, yeah. uh, lure colors and whatnot. We we're kind of comparing notes about what you and I did with the flounders today and whatnot, and, uh, kind of getting into that. And, uh, very, he and I have very, very similar thought process. That thought process does not always work 100%. I know there's certain systems like the one we're sitting in front of and foul river is kind of an anomaly yeah. because it has a different color water, different color uh bottom color um than, yeah. than other places so uh it doesn't and it's very uh, sensitive to cloud cover and it is it is and uh and so i i guess i guess really the thing the thing to do and to think about uh with that is when you um when you are out and about if you do feel like there's some fish around but maybe you're not having as much success you know go complete opposite you know don't don't throw like a don't throw like if we're talking about slick lure colors, you know, don't throw a, a cool beans and then throw a dirty ice and then throw like a a croaker, you know, like go the opposite direction. Throw the goblin make or the a, mad mullet. Make the ones you're throwing stark differences. Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like go to one extreme the, or the, the spectrum. Whether, one extreme or the other. Yeah, like I was kind of telling Patrick uh while we were talking, I feel like I feel like there's two colors. You know what I mean? There's there's dark and right. there's light, you know, or dark and bright, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, dark and bright. So uh, go, go one to the other, you know, and, and kind of try to lay with that for a little while and take some patience, uh, uh, to do that. But uh, it also has taken like two of the same rod rigged up so you can make 10 casts with one color right. and then pick up the other one and make 10 casts with that one versus like having to unrig and re-rig and all and everything like that. So that, uh, and that's kind of like, kind of what, uh, uh, that, that thought process as well, what we're talking about with the Lynn there about having, how he's talking about when he goes off, he's got so many rod holders in the boat. He can have yeah. six of this setup, six of this setup, six of this setup, two pitch rods, a trolling rod, uh, yeah. you know, like all that kind of stuff. I that goes a long way. It does. Uh, I feel like for me, I can't have enough rod holders on a on an inshore boat. I'm very limited on my inshore boat. How yeah. many rod holders I can have uh, versus these big offshore boats? But I, you know, that's. Um, uh, and, and of course everybody knows, I, well, I guess say everybody knows, but uh, I'm a rod builder. So I build all my rods for certain applications and whatnot. And then that's when it's, it's just so easy when you go out there, you got everything rigged up on the rod you want it on yeah. for that application. You got four whatnot. popping cork rods. You got four slick little rods. You got kind yep. of that deal. jigging rods and the whole, the yeah. whole nine yards, you know? So, uh, that, that is, that really, really makes life easy for sure um what did you learn well to dive in on that a little more i mean okay well like today i mean the reason that we figured that out was you and i were dark 
and Bill and Jim had on brighter colors. So that's right. Change it up. I mean, especially if you have four people on the boat. Yeah. Even if you have two, you don't know really know what they're keying in on. You throw you throw something dark and I'll throw something bright. Right. So, I mean, that's yeah, why we that's figured that out today. Yeah, and that's yeah. And I do that all the time when I'm right. on charters, especially when I'm throwing artificial lures. I kind of will just tie on like two bright colors, two dark colors, and I hand the rods out, you know. And I think that's something you do probably just do subconsciously. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's almost yeah. second nature, you know, and then see what starts to work. You know, yeah. if everybody's getting bit on, uh, you know, pearl and chartreuse or pearl and pink Go uh, that way. And, and not, not, I was, I was shocked at how, I mean, it made, it made the difference. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, I, bet, start I, difference. I bet we didn't make 10 casts with the, uh, when you and I made lure changes from the dark colors to the light colors, we didn't make 10 casts and both of us called a fish. Agreed. You know, yeah. We uh, felt like we were getting our butts yeah, kicked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what did i say to bill uh something about like yeah I, I never gave flounder this much credit i thought you had to drag some stinky plastic on That's the bottom right. you know <laughs> yep. they do care about colors they apparently do. they do they do and i know they do but it uh yeah. that was just kind of like i'm just a chunking and winding you know what i mean that's yep. what was tied on that's what I kept going with so yeah what'd you learn i really liked you know it's, it's later in the year i mean even even snapper fishing but grouper fishing keying in on what Delenn was saying about going slow. Obviously, that was uh we talked about that for a long time and how that's just totally different than it used to be. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can you can find a spot any day you want. You just got to go slow enough for your transducer to read it. So yeah. I like that also came back to mind to me. But uh one thing that I took from him was talking about finding those smaller rocks. You know, if you go to the a location that you know holds fish, um, you're kind of drifting those natural bottoms or whatever, uh, look for those smaller uh unmolested rocks kind of find a little hidey hole yep why wouldn't that i mean that makes a lot of sense uh, yeah, yeah yeah there may not be 50 grouper on it but there's going to be five hungry ones and then just kind of bounce on to the next one right right and uh man that makes so much more sense so much sense uh and it it <laughs> it I, it's just it, you know like i said something about throwing our cell phones in the water to to make reefs you know like this day and age everything moves so fast so that's what i'm saying and that's it's in a hurry that, all the time and that yeah we're always in a hurry you know and it really takes i feel like slowing down sometimes to um to find some new stuff offshore, optimize you know? your, yeah optimize your time you know heck and uh to me to me it's almost worth burning a tank of fuel to ride around slow all day yeah to find some quality numbers, you yeah. know, to, to find stuff because it's out there. And this will be a good time of year to do it. Yeah. Go slow, put out some Wahoo trollers. I mean, mm -hmm. Skipper caught a, you know, on the on the escape, they called an 85 pounder, a Wahoo, yep. 20 miles out. Yeah. On Halloween day. That's Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Wahoo Halloween, man. So, I, mean, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Just put out some plugs and chug around yep. the zigzags in the in the reef zone i mean you yep. can catch something if i had any days off i'd invite you to go do that here, right. Right here for, uh, maybe we can do it at night yeah <laughs> <laughs> burning the candle at both ends that's right yeah well uh well butch i really uh really enjoyed uh coming here and enjoyed fishing with you this morning and then coming here and uh co-hosting with you at your beautiful house here on east foul river guys uh if y'all don't know but she has a terrible life over here and uh <laughs> Look at all this beautiful water every day. I just saw bald eagle fly by a little while ago. Nice. Squirrels running around on the porch. I'm watching uh speckled trout go nuts on these mullet right here. Oh, there ain't no fish in here. Come on now. <laughs> Snakes and alligators. Uh, I was embellishing a little bit right there, but uh <laughs> I enjoyed anywho. it too, man. Thanks man. for thanks for joining me today. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. It was a very, very enjoyable day. All right, guys, that wraps up another great segment. Let's take a quick break, check out a few of this week's sponsors. That segment was brought to you by Sam Stop and Shop. Sam Stop and Shop is your one-stop shop located at 27122 Canal Road in Orange Beach. Sam's has a little bit of everything, including a deli, inshore, offshore, and surf fishing tackle. They also have bait, clothing, groceries, name brand sunglasses, and so much more. Sam's also has tackle experts and podcast contributors Chris Beche and Dusty Hayes on hand to answer any questions you may have about any type of local fishing and can also repair your rods and reels if necessary. Stop by and shop or call them at 251-981-4245 today. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up this week. You guys, please make sure and subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to text the word fishing to 314-665-1767 to get that free AFCO sun protection mask promo code and also to be added to our email list. And we'll send you the new show each week. You guys keep whacking them. Be safe out there. 
This week's Alabama Saltwater Fishing Report brought to you by me, Angelo DiPaola, The Coastal Connection. Find us online at thecoastalconnection.com. And also brought to you by National Land Realty. If you're in the market to sell your land, check out the fastest growing, most innovative land brokerage in the country at nationalland.com. And also by Fish Bites. Whether you are hitting the sand with set rigs using the traditional scent strips for pompano or fishing the flats or marshes for speckled trout, redfish, and flounder, Fish Bites has something for you. Fish Bites baits and lures are made with pride in the sunshine state of the USA. Check out the full line of scented saltwater and freshwater baits at fishbites.com. And also by MB Ranch King. MB Ranch King hunting blinds and feeders are built to last right here in the USA. They offer high quality, easy to use corn and protein feeders that can be filled with both feet on the ground. Call Kevin today for more info or a quote at 205-807-2937. MB Ranch King, built in the pursuit of perfection and also brought to you by Bucks Island. They have new pontoon boats, bass boats, bow riders, and aluminum boats for sale. They provide boat service on all kinds of boats, even if they weren't purchased from Bucks. Visit them at 4500 Highway 77 in Southside, Alabama. And also brought to you by Dixie Supply and Baker Metalworks are proud to be your metal roofing headquarters for over 40 years. Save time and money by buying from the most reliable manufacturer on the Gulf Coast. Buy it today, pick it up today. With the addition of their new store in Cantonment, Florida, they now have eight locations to serve you. Dixie Supply and Baker Metalworks, your metal roofing headquarters. And also buy Mallard Bay Outdoors. Book your next guided hunting or fishing trip with thoroughly vetted guides or charters. Built by sportsmen for sportsmen. Mallardbay.com. And also brought to you by Killer Dock. Killer Dock uses marine grade aluminum to make fabulous fish cleaning tables and stunning canopies that will keep us out of the sun. Killer Dock combines durability, function, and design to uniquely upgrade your entire dock experience. Visit KillerDock.com to see more. And also brought to you by Hilton's Real Time Navigator, bringing you the highest quality online satellite fishing charts since 2004. Your source for sea tips, altimetry, currents, and watercolor at Hilton'sOffshore.com. And also by Test Calibration. Test Calibration is your source for sales and service of diesel turbochargers and fuel injection systems since 1976. Contact them at 800-822-0057 or visit them online at testcalibrationdieselandturbo.com. 